I would like to call to order this special select board meeting for October 9th, 2024. It is 6 p.m. Before we begin, I'll go over some brief general announcements. Anyone wishing to speak in person must come forward to the microphone in the center aisle. Participants on Zoom should click on the raise their hand button if they wish to speak and mute their microphone when not speaking. Online participants, please confirm that you can hear me by clicking on the raise your hand button. I'm not sure if there's anyone there. All participants must state their full name before addressing the assembly. All questions and remarks should be addressed to the chair. Your speeches must be excuse me, your speeches must be confined to the merits of the item. In person, participants will be allowed to speak first, then Zoom participants. All participants will be allowed to speak twice on a given item for a maximum duration of two minutes each time. After you've spoken once on a particular item, you will not be recognized a second time during discussion on that item until all other voters who wish to speak on the issue for the first time are given an opportunity to do so. As I did last week, I'd just like to talk briefly about the ballots. I did talk to uh, Sarah Haskins, our town clerk today. They are expecting the ballots, the local ballot. We've all received our ballot for the general election, the statewide election, but the local ballot, uh, Sarah is expecting, will be mailed uh, in the next few days. You will certainly be getting it by October 16th, and she was thinking perhaps a couple of days before that. So uh, uh, just wanted to say that. So. And just in case there is any confusion, there are two ballots. You've received one already from the state and you'll receive one uh, for the local um, issues that we are going to discuss tonight, of which there are three articles. So moving forward on that, um, agenda changes, additions? No. So we have four uh, um, agenda items. Three of them speak to the three articles. The first is to uh, the first agenda item here is to discuss the special town meeting November fifth, two thousand twenty-four, Article One. This is the article in relation to the charter that's been proposed. This will be the fourth public uh, meeting that we've had to discuss the charter. We haven't had really any discussion. We haven't had any discussion or questions about the charter yet. But I would, uh, I would say I'm more than happy to read the language that is proposed for the charter, if anybody would like me to do that, if the board would like me to do that, or if anybody in the audience would like me to do that. I, w I would suggest yes, in that some people may, even if they're not online, okay, great. might be watching it on YouTube in the yeah. coming days. So. Okay, that's a good point, George. And I think we did that last time, didn't we? We might have read it. Yeah, okay. So the language that is proposed for the town, uh, for the voters of Morristown to vote upon is whether um, the inhabitants of the town of Morristown, this is section one, the corporate existence retained. The inhabitants of the town of Morristown within the corporate limits now established shall continue to be a municipal corporation by the name of the town of Morristown. Section two, general law application except when changed or modified by this chapter or by any lawful regulation or ordinance of the town of Morristown, all the statutes of the state relating to municipalities shall apply to the town of Morristown. Section three, town manager, part A. The town manager shall be the chief executive officer and the head of the administrative branch of the town government and shall be responsible to the select board for the efficient administration of the municipal affairs of the town. Part B, the town manager shall have the authority to hire, appoint, discipline, and remove all town employees subject to the provisions of personal personnel rules approved by the select board. The town manager may authorize a department head to hire, appoint, discipline, or remove an employee subject to the manager's discretion and supervision. So that is the language that is proposed. I'll open it up to the board first. Are there any questions, comments? No. We'd like to hear from, from the public. From the audience? 
from anybody online. Oh, I'm sorry. I just have a question. Uh, your um, name first. Oh, I know, Leah I know. Bronner. And I just the about the charter. Does it cost? Is this is this a cost thing? Like, are you asking us to bring any money in for this, or is this just a a law thing? This is not a cost thing. Okay. <laughs> all right. So no cost. Um, all right. Thanks. Any other questions? Leah Barrett. What's the difference between the municipal plan now and the charter plan? What, uh, the municipal plan? Well, what we've been running with. So, so I mean, it basically. I mean, doesn't uh, Brent have the right now to fire an employee or? Uh, do, so, do everything that he's going to do with the charter. That's a good question. I think what we're doing, I think when you read this and you think about this, this is quite simple. We're starting quite simple. We did have a charter committee that was, uh, which was organized to put this together. Uh, that committee thought that uh, simplicity was a good start. And the first two sections here are, are quite common to most charters. And section three, I think, just kind of confirms for us um, some of the duties for the town manager. Not necessarily all of them. This could be changed, this could be added to in the future, but it just confirms that. So yes, there probably is some redundancy in there, but we just wanted to make it clear. So could I add to that? Yeah. So, Right now, um, any municipality that doesn't have a town charter operates under state statute. And so that's what we've been operating under. Now that we've gone to a town manager form of government, um, the, the one thing in the piece that deals with the town manager's ability to hire, discipline, appoint uh, an employee, um, particularly a zoning administrator in any municipality. Um, the process is, is that the planning commission um, advertises interviews and recommends the hire of a zoning administrator. It doesn't come directly to the town manager. So there's many municipalities, including Waterbury, where I used to live, um, has moved in to have a charter and include this language to give every employee now under the jurisdiction of the town manager that there's no exceptions. It just seemed an awkward process for hiring an individual that goes through a, a, an advisory board to make a recommendation on a hire. It should really come directly from the town manager. So it just cleans up that language. The other part of this, um, the other part of the charter is, is that if we start with something that is um, simple, um, we can over time amend this. Um, the charter uh, requires legislative approval. So if the town voters on November 5th approve this, it goes to the legislature in January, it goes through four different committees, two in the House and two in the Senate, um, and then it's passed by the governor and we then have a town charter. Every time you go to amend the town charter, for whatever reason, um, it goes back through a legislative process. And there's public hearings with the public. It isn't done just by the select board. It's done by um, a vote of the, uh, of, the, of the town to make any amendments to it. This basically just sets the stage for anything else that we want to do that's that's in addition or separate from what the state allows municipalities to do. So it's, um, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's um, a good step forward to self-governance. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Go ahead. Lee, let me give you an example. When, when I came on and there was talk about a town charter, I went to look at other town charters, the other communities that are already put in. One of them ones that is not here, and whether we ever bring it up or not is something else, but what some of the others carried was that the, the town would then be able to uh, meet their requirement for town reports 
the annual town report that we publish electronically rather than print the four or five hundred books that however many books we print. Now, I'm not suggesting that's something we're thinking about. That was done as an amendment in those towns. And then that, as Chris said, that then had to be voted on by the, the, popul the population. And then if that was approved, then it was sent to the legislature for approval of the amendment. So that's an example of, of how the charter allowed those towns to decide they didn't want to go through the publishing process. They wanted to meet the statute. They did it electronically. That's just an example, not one that I'm saying is on the table for us, but just an example of things that the Charter allows further amendment on. I take it the selectmen are for this? Yes. Yeah. So yep. the, the Charter Committee, which was made up of both um, you know, members of the select board as well as the public, um, reviewed where we wanted to go with this. And the recommendation from that Charter Committee was to move forward with this simple charter to the select board. The select board then again voted in favor of that. Now it's coming to the public to vote on it as well. It's safe to say, you can see why we're starting simple. There is a multitude of sections that could be added to this in the future. Yeah. yeah my name is Tom Clavia, Morristown. Uh, I was told the China also enabled us to get different funds from the state where. Uh, that we weren't uh, able to be participating in without a charter. Is that It allows us to, correct? I just misheard you. It allows that, we, that we would be eligible for, for funding some uh, funds from the state or from other agencies that we would not be uh, able <coughs> to get if we weren't, if we did not have a charter. I'm unaware of that. Yeah, I'm Maybe unaware of that too, the but. Town plan and designated downtown. Right. Yeah. That would I mean, as I just said to Lee, there is yeah. a multitude of things that could be added to this. I'm, I'm not going to say no to you, Tom, but I'm not okay. aware of any right now. Okay. All right. Any other questions, comments? Any questions, comments online? Okay. I'm going to move on to number two then. So number two is to discuss the special town meeting, November 5th, 2024, Article 2. And Judy, do you mind popping up that slide? Those of you in the room have this in your packet. I think this summarizes very nicely what Article 2 is. Article 2 can, uh, I think, safely be titled the designation of a special tax assessment district. But the article does say, and we went through extensive legal advice to get this wording together, but the article does say, shall the voters pursuant to 24 VSA section 3254 levy a special assessment not to exceed $200,000 for the purpose of constructing stormwater improvements to benefit 64 parcels. 63 parcels having frontages on Foss Street, Jersey Court, Jersey Way, and Sterling Court, and one parcel with frontage on Cottage Street. Said 64 parcels being designated as the Jersey Heights Special Assessment District, with special assessment being apportioned among these 64 parcels based on the impervious surface present on each parcel and the assessment being payable over a period not to exceed 20 years in semi-annual installments. The flow chart to the uh, left of what I just read or the flow chart that you may see up on the TV in a second if you don't have this in front of you spells out I think quite clearly what happens with the two options. Obviously, the voters of Morristown, not obviously, but the voters of Morristown will be given the choice of voting yes or no on this article. If they vote yes, it will be passed, and the Jersey Heights Special Assessment District uh, will be formed, and they would be responsible for 66% of the, um, the monies that would be needed to enhance the stormwater, uh, stormwater system. 
and the town of Morristown were responsible for 34 percent. And, and really, that's based upon impervious surfaces. The percentages of impervious surfaces present. Right, and that's. Um, after the uh, grant money is applied to the uh, overall construction costs. Right, yeah. It will, yeah. If it fails, then the town of Morristown is responsible for 100%. So, as Chris has alluded to, there is um, grant money. I think most of us here know this, but I'll just say this for those that might not. Uh, we were, once we signed on to the permit and took responsibility for the stormwater permit, the town or the state has given us $316,000 roughly, 316,000, there's a little bit more there, that would go towards the construction of, this, of these stormwater improvements. Uh, the estimate is at this point that the total cost is somewhere in the neighborhood of $429,000. As I said last week, as many of us said, several of us said last week, we don't think it's going to cost that, but that's what, those are the numbers that we have at this point. And that's what, uh, depending upon whether it passes or fails, that would be the burden either placed entirely on the town if it fails or shared between Jersey Heights and the town if it passes by the creation of this special tax assessment district. So with that, I would open it up to any comments, questions. Desmond Cole Clasier. Um, so I have a couple quick questions. One, where are these figures coming from for the cost? Is this still from three years ago? Have we not gotten updated figures to, as to what the cost would actually be? These are Brent, do you want to speak to that? So yeah, there's a, there's a pending permit with the state based upon um, a stormwater solution that was submitted approximately three years ago by a, a civil engineering company, uh, Watershed Consulting. And um, Mumley Engineering has been working as a project manager on this since then, mm -hmm. but there's no reason to move forward with a new solution until um, we had, the select board had voted to assume the responsibility on behalf of the town and move forward with negotiating with the state. Now that we've done that, uh, Mumley Engineering has been involved with another three acre stormwater project in a neighboring community. And that same stormwater solution that was submitted on behalf of Morristown three years ago was submitted on behalf of that community as well. Little, some exceptions. And um, based upon his experience with this other stormwater, he believes that another solution can be provided that will s save significantly. That'll be reduced from what was submitted several years ago. Um, and he's in the process of going through that that process with the state, the permitting, and, and the town. Um, but we will not have any real numbers until the state reviews whatever we submit and accepts it. So it's impossible at this point uh, to provide concrete figures because it's all reliant upon a &R reviewing the permit application and either accepting it or coming back and asking for amendments or saying, no, is, is it workable? You have to come up with some other solution. Okay. Then the other question I had, so when we met, um, I don't know, was it August, something like that, I don't even remember. We were told that the only way to get the grant was to force Jersey Heights to essentially pay for the difference, whether this tax um, assessment that you're you're trying to, to put in place here. It seems like now that isn't needed to get the grant. Am I correct in that? In order to get the grant, we needed to take ownership of that stormwater permit. That's what we needed to do. The, as the part of that, yes, as part of that process, somebody needed to sign off on that. But in the town But as part of that process, we as a board needed to consider 
who was going to pay for that and how that was going to happen. Yeah. But so, but we weren't going to get the grant until somebody stepped up and accepted responsibility for it, the well, stormwater but permit. I think your question is, you know, because you and I and I think a number of us in the room originally thought that the public partner relationship was was predicated on uh, either an HOA, which you don't have, or some sort of commitment uh, through a tax assessment district to make the public private piece so that the public was engaged and the, pri and the private was engaged. Yeah. Um, when, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Brent, but as the conversations have unfolded, the fact that a &R is willing to work with the town of Morristown to bring this to fruition, and they very much would like to have us take advantage of the $316,000 to save everybody a, a boatload of money here. In doing it, they um, transition to the fact that the private piece, uh, because we have to get um, specific easements based on the current design, um, through private properties um, and that there was a, a commitment to doing that from Jersey Heights, um, that they would be satisfied with that being the private piece of it. Correct. Um, so um, they, in my opinion, and I don't know about anybody else sitting here, but it, it appeared that they transitioned somewhat with their position to try to make this project work. Um, they, and, and they did the same thing in terms of the HOA. They wanted an HOA, that wasn't gonna happen. So they needed to pivot and they pivoted some more and we appreciate that fact, but um, I don't believe, and I don't wanna speak for everybody here on the board, it doesn't change the metrics in terms of how we wanna move forward with getting the project done. But how now, because the, the town already owned the permits, took responsibility of the permits. It says right here, even though it's kind of misleading in how this is written on there, but the town or has always owned the permit no, for, that's not well, not as always, right. but at least in, in the past 17 years. No, our name was, no, what we did is we- Until 2011. Until 2011. Okay, one, one. So my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong here, um, is, is that we accept a responsibility for the road and the sidewalks. We did not accept responsibility with our name on the permit. We, we stepped forward and renewed the permit because it was gonna go into default. Um, Which have, is accepting responsibility of the permit. I, I, I mean, you can look at it however you want to. Our, our responsibility was that we didn't wanna see that particular subdivision um, permit go into default. So the town, for whatever reason, and none of us were on the board at that point, so I can't I'm, tell you why. I, I understand um, that. Wait, let me finish, please. So yeah. the town paid the fee to continue to renew that permit. It has to re be renewed every five years, and the town has done that. The town didn't accept responsibility, ultimately, for the stormwater permit until we agreed to move forward with uh, with the grant money and be the applicant to do the project. Am I correct in that? So um, there, there's clearly in the minutes in 2007 that the town, not even the sidewalks, interestingly enough, passed a motion to accept responsibility for the roads. Um, as another resident has mentioned, there was there is a deed that was submitted to the town clerk's office that handed over responsibility for the stormwater permit. But that is a document that nobody in the town signed, and the only people who acknowledged it was the town clerk's office in recording it. It was not legally reviewed, as far as I know, or confined from any records by any member of the town administration or select board. Um, and I've looked for information about why we would accept responsibility for filing the permit at some point. And I can't find that either. What, what I'm assuming is that because the town knew that they had responsibility for the roadway and that impervious surface, that rather than having the possibility of it going into default with A&R, 
with us having a portion of the responsibility, uh, somebody made the decision to, to file on behalf because there was no HOA. And throughout this process, I can see record of the state um, with the permit. The permit is in limbo currently because originally the state was requiring that there be an HOA for the, the, as part of the process for, for approving the permit. The state has since moved, as Chris said earlier, and they're willing to, they've been willing to negotiate. So I can't find any record of, of the town knowingly accepting responsibility for the permit. There is a deed out there that was filed with the town clerks after the town select board simply said, we will accept responsibility for the roadways. Um, if it's if it's out there, I'm willing to review it. And, and you know, if there's some sort of record that somebody can show, I'm willing to re, you know review it and, and say, yeah, that's what it states. But I can't find anything. Now, admittedly, I haven't spent I've spent hours looking for, for various information because I want to be informed about the past so I can move forward for the future for the town. Mm -hmm. But I also had significant deadlines to get this contract negotiated for the grant funds to get, you know, Mr. Mumley moving forward with this because we have deadlines um, and to proceed forward. Uh, but I, I cannot find anything that where the town accepted responsibility for the stormwater. They did file. Besides filing for the permit. Yeah. So filing for a permit doesn't mean accepting responsibility? Well, it, I don't know the that's, that's a yes or no kind of question, right? Isn't it? <laughs> it's a I mean, it's a different position. You're pretty aggressive. It, right? I, my, opinion, my opinion um, is that that could be argued. And I, I brought it up to legal counsel, um, and they've, they've said the same thing. But um, They said it could be argued, but what was the, the final answer, though? That was the answer. Yeah. That, it could be argued that the town is not accepting responsibility for the stormwater solution, they're just simply filing a permit. Right, and so who filed this deed? Uh, Minaj. Okay. And what's interesting, that I've also found in 2000, as late as 2018, representatives of Minaj filing materials on behalf of Minaj related to the stormwater permit. So how, how do, has anybody brought them to this to, because it sounds like then if they are the holders of this deed, they're still trying to file for, how come they're not paying for it? Well, they, they're not the holders of the deed well, because of the deed. Well, they filed the deed and there, you said they're still filing um, information for the stormwater um, runoff. How come they're not paying for it? Because the 64 parcels are individual parcels that we're not an, an HOA, which sounds like that's the big thing. You guys, like Minaj is supposed to do an HOA. They didn't do their job, essentially. How come they are not, aren't paying a portion of this? Have, has, the, have, has anybody from the select board asked them or confronted them or spoken to them or the town manager about this? I have not spoken to Minaj Corporation, no. Have you? I have not. I know that they're willing to work with us because they still own a piece of property where stormwater solution will have to be located. They're willing to work with the, the town to provide easements and for the, the construction of the solution. Um, yeah, but for the, them working with you for the construction of the solution is them getting paid to do construction, correct? Is them getting paid? Well, I, I you said they're, they're willing to work with the construction for the solution. So are they going to be That's doing no, no. Okay, all right. So again, because if they are, sounds like they are partially responsible for this, well, mainly responsible for this entire thing. How come they aren't a party here? Again, originally it was pointed out that in order to get the grant money, it sounds like you said the state pivoted we would have to do a tax assessment. We don't need, I mean, we have to do a special tax district. We don't need a special tax district to get the grant money. So why are we still being forced to create a special tax, tax district? How come the town isn't pivoting, pivoting on behalf of its residents? We are residents of the town. 
right? Instead, you're pivoting to make put the town, the rest of the town against us by saying, hey, we have to pay for everything if they don't pay for it, if they don't pay for it. I think the, 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 I think the for the rest of the residents. Yeah, it's a great question, and it's one that we've we've talked about at several meetings now. And I think part of the answer to that is looking forward. If if we agree to take on all of this, then it does set a precedent for the future, for the next state mandate that comes down. I don't know what that's going to look like. I don't know what that's going to involve. I don't know how much money that could be. But does it then put us in a position where we have set a precedent that's going to carry forward? And so for that reason, I think the board wanted to give the voters of Morristown the opportunity to decide on a special tax assessment district because this is this stormwater permit and the upgrades that are necessary are, are only only for Jersey Heights, they're not for the rest of the town. And, yep. and I know that there's questions and comments about that, but that, I believe, is a large part of why the board, the select board, made the decision that it did, was to avoid any future precedent. So the next precedent, but the precedent you're now setting is that if any other development becomes out of, uh, like their permits get out of whack, then that, now the town will vote against them if the town doesn't want to pay for pay for whatever state mandates come come ahead. Well, there's so it, fourteen of these three acre sites in yeah. Morristown. I'm not even talking about the three the three acre sites. I'm just talking about it in general. As we know, the state changes rules and regulations every day for anything. So who's to say the next time any kind of permit for something the state changes and another in another uh, subdivision or neighborhood, town doesn't want to step up and pay for it because they're not, it doesn't affect the entire town. It only affects those 45 houses or neighborhood. So now the rest of the town will vote against them and create it so that they have to pay for whatever uh, repairs. That's the, that's the precedent, that's being, precedent that's being set I, right now. I understand your frustration and uh... You know, there's over 700 of these sites across the state, and other towns are dealing with the same thing. To get, we're one of but the seven that's lucky enough to get some of it. But we're, you know, we as a board made that decision um, on behalf of the entire town. And I'm answering your question that the precedent was that, you know, this is this is a stormwater permit for Jersey Heights. I I I, I fully understand your your frustration, but in our making our decision it was in part this concern about future present precedent down the road and that we will we as a town will take responsibility for our 34 percent of the impervious service in in jersey heights but that jersey heights would be responsible for the remaining 66 percent of impervious sites imper impervious services <coughs> And in order to do that, we needed to do a special tax assessment district. But the thing is, you guys aren't exploring all options at the same at the same aspect. He himself said that there are people that have put de put deeds into place that are going for permits. We haven't even explored the option of getting them to kick in. It's just, hey, you 64 residents that in none of our deeds says anything about an HOA and none of our deeds. I, I read my deed. There is no HOA says nothing like that at all. But we were supposed to have an HOA, supposedly. You aren't confronting the person who is responsible for that. So you're not exploring all options. So you're not looking on behalf of all the residents of the town. You're looking on behalf of some of the residents of the town. So I, just, now leave it at that. Just, just to kind of follow up on, on a couple of things. Um, you know, first of all, I don't think there's anybody sitting at this table or in the audience who's been paying attention to this um, feels that the legislature um, and a and um, because the legislature passed a bill, a &R ended up having to enforce the bill. The fact that they made it retroactive is the biggest bur in the saddle here. Yeah, um, I, I, you know, it, it defies all logic that they would go back 
you know, 20 some odd years and reach into, you know, whether it's Jersey Heights or anybody else and say, you get a permit that was issued back in 2000 or 1999 or two, early 2001. <coughs> and now you have to meet current standards, but it is what it is. Um, you know, Jersey Heights became a subdivision in 1986 when they were issued an active 50 permit and then in 2001 like november um, they were issued the, the development the, the, uh, the subdivision was issued a stormwater permit and from that point forward everything that's dealt with the state says that jersey heights is a development um, whether it's in your deed or you know the HOA piece, you know we cannot turn back the clock and hold anybody no, responsible. But nonetheless, the <clears throat> Jersey Heights is viewed as a development. But you are holding us responsible. So, you know, Congress Street, Maple Street, they were never issued a permit, never issued an Act 250 permit, never issued a stormwater permit. They are not a development. So it's a distinction between a development and whatever other streets that we have that we mm -hmm. are responsible for. If we were talking about stormwater upgrades on any of those streets, the town would be paying for the whole thing. But the simple fact that um, this development came to be and there's a shared responsibility now because it's a development and it's separate and distinct. And you and I and the rest of us can agree to disagree on that fact, but it doesn't change. I understand it doesn't change that, but you're doing exactly what the state is doing, what you said you sucks. You're reaching back back in the past and you are holding us accountable for it. The state actually let go holding us accountable by allowing us to have the public private by just the easements. But the town is still holding us accountable so, for it. So sort of looking at it somewhat differently, if the town had not, because we've been speculating a lot of things here tonight, if the town had not renewed the permit and it went into default and ANR decided that they were going to litigate to enforce that, the town would only be responsible for 34% of this. And they would be looking at you individually to upgrade, help upgrade the system. And you would have to figure out how you were going to do that. Yep. So regardless of how we got here, I think that you can't lose sight of the fact that had the town not stepped in to keep the permit current, you would be in a very different place in terms of responsibility to the state and not having the municipality assist in, in trying to remedy this problem um, had that not happened. Most likely, if that would have happened, they also would have been going after Minaj because it was him that, that I, held it all. You know, I, I, I I'm just saying, sure. you're the one that, that, that brought that up. I, yep. And you also said that we are where we are now. I'm just trying to get you. I understand that none of you were sitting here when, when, it ha when all this went down. I totally understand that. But you are sitting here now. You are sitting here now and you've seen the pivots. So I'm just wondering why there's no pivot on, on your side, why it's still so strict. You guys have to pay for the 66%. When all, every single last one of you know that us as individuals have nothing at all to do to do with happen. Every single one of you know that. Yeah. So to still be like, oh, no, you still have to pay that 66%, uh, still, still a little messed up. I, and I'm I, sure every single last one of you know that as well. I know I should know, and I, I, I apologize. I don't remember your first name again. Desmond. Desmond. <laughs> Desmond, um, I, Desmond, I've known you for decades, and I, I, I'm just going to move on to the next speaker. Thank you. Uh, Tom Cluey, uh, uh, as soon as the public gets the information that Desmond just put out, you're, you're going to fail. This, this bill is going to fail, and you're going to be stuck with it. It's $85,000 is what we're talking about here. The town, you as a board, okay, I'll, 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 plow for the sidewalks for $180,000. And the only topic discussion on, uh, uh, it was whether they could get between telephone calls. $175,000 for, 
for a plow that people like Jersey Heights have no use for because they don't have any sidewalks. And now you're, we've gone through two meetings or three meetings plus all the meetings before for $85,000. How much money is it costing for all these meetings? The lawyers, for all that, for everything else. How much more is it gonna cost when these folks appeal this? More lawyers, more than $85,000. What would they be appealing? What they're gonna appeal, appeal that they votes. have to pay for this. Last, didn't you, you say- You mean if the town votes to approve it? They will appeal it. Okay. And, and that's more legal. For $85,000, we're going all through this, pitching half the town against the 64 people here. We're trying to unite this town. We're split right down the middle, the middle and we're trying to unite it, and now we're going to stick them with the bill because it sets precedent so you can do it again. When this information gets out to the public, and it will, you can bet your bottom dollar they're not going to let that happen. And you are responsible for bringing this up. Thank you, Tom. Go ahead. Hi, Maria Ward. Um, I, th I think I can answer a couple of questions and then um, I have comments to make. Um, I know I'm supposed to talk to you, but Brent's right here. That's okay. So, Brent, <laughs> I think I can answer your question when you just mentioned that you noticed that Minosh just uh, resubmitted renewal permits 2018. Um, I believe that is for the Jersey Heights extension, okay. the, the, the secondary phase of Jer Jersey Heights. That's what I have here from um, Megan McIntyre when I emailed her to ask for the, um, the life of this permit. Um, I asked for the history of this permit. So she also sent me the history of the Jersey Heights extension. And I did notice that date of 2018, Brent. So that may be what you're talking about. Um, you can share that information with Brent afterwards. <laughs> okay. Okay. I should have looked at you. And That's okay. Brent, I guess. So also, um, I understand, um, I really do understand uh, you know how you all read the minutes from 2007 and it was not in the minutes um, I looked up the minutes myself and I read that as well however I used to take the minutes for the select board a long long time ago <laughs> and one thing I can tell you is that the minutes are a generalized overview of the meeting they're not an in-depth exact of absolutely everything it said it's a general overview so the fact that this conversation is not in the minutes, I don't, I don't find that to be something that we can hold weight to. Um, especially uh, what I give weight to is I met with Howard Minosh and he said, yes, the infra underground infrastructure did convey. I spoke with Gary Nolan and he said, yes, the underground infrastructure did convey last week. Wally Reeve said he was at the meeting, and yes, the underground infrastructure did convey. Um, so I just have a comment, a long one. So in previous meetings regarding creating the special tax district, it was stated several times that it's in the town's best interest to receive the grant money. And at the time, we were told that that was how we were going to go about to go about it was to form the special tax district. Um, now we're aware that the grant funding will be received regardless. Although I did not agree with your position, to a degree, I could understand it. I understood that there was over $300,000 hanging and that you wanted it. I could understand that even though I didn't agree with it. But now you're trying to force a neighborhood to pay for a state mandated upgrade on town owned infrastructure. The understanding is gone. So there's a couple, couple aspects that I think of when it comes to this project. One aspect is the payment. As we learned last week, the estimated cost for this system is roughly $429,000 
not including legal fees and interest and in anything that may come up. The grant fund is $316,000, which leaves the town responsible for $113,000. There are 2,495 taxable parcels in this town. If we levied a special tax assessment on each parcel one time, it would cost each parcel $45. No long-term loan, no interest, one and done. However, you're choosing to, to tax the 64 parcels in Jersey Heights at 66%, um, which means $1,165 per parcel, long-term loan at 5.5%, not to mention the work it's going to create for Sarah, and the liens it's going to put on people's properties. So $45 one and done versus almost $1,200 in an ongoing tax bill. And then there's the principal aspect of this. The stormwater system that the state is forcing the town to update, update was deeded to the town from the H.A. Minosh Corporation in 2007. The, the permit was amended and issued to the town of Morristown in 2011. There is a guest perspective written by Chris Palermo on the town website, and I'm assuming it will be seen in the News and Citizen. It reads in part, why is the town of Morristown involved in this? In 2007, the town of Morristown Select Board agreed to take over the roads and sidewalks of the subdivision. They did not assume responsibility for the subdivision stormwater permit until the permit was about to expire and there was no HOA for the subdivision. Actually, the town did assume responsibility for the permit per Book 144, page 535 of the warranty deed that is on file right across the hallway where it states after listing all seven of the subdivision permits, including the stormwater permit number 3015, which is in question. The grantee acknowledges that the conditions of these permits run with the land and that it has received copies of all of the re reference permits prior to the execution of this deed. There was, uh, there was discussion last week about the town not signing the warranty deed. There is no place for the town to sign the warranty deed. A grantee does not sign a warranty deed, only the grantor. So, my opinion is along with the wording of Article 2, this is a very clear misrepresentation of the facts, which is now on the town website. So my question, maybe I shouldn't even ask the question because I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, my thought is, I think this is a huge disservice of the 64 residents of Jersey Heights to make us responsible to update infrastructure that the town owns and is responsible for. And that's calling a spade a spade. Thank you. Other comments? Go ahead, Lee. I noticed um, when you're um, allocating percentages here, how did you, um, we have 16 units in the condominium project, and yet two of them were, were all allocated 1%. And two of them are allocated at point five. How did I believe this sheet, Lee? If I can just interject here. Um, well, first of all, the percentages. I think you understand this are based upon the impervious surface, an estimate of the impervious surface on each one of those parcels, and um, I would guess and it seems like a they have the that they, they that have these the percentages are somewhat rounded off since they all seem to be point one uh, zero zero so I, I i would guess that this is this is an attempt to 
figure out what those percentages are approximately, what they're exactly going to be, will be different. But, but it's a it, you know it's an attempt to. My guess is it's going to be a fair amount of work to go through and you know to add up exactly what that surface area is on each parcel. And then I notice some are two percent. Exactly, right. Be, and clearly they're larger, but are they going to work out to be exactly two percent? I'm not sure. But it was an attempt to answer the questions that were raised earlier. You know, how much is each parcel going to be uh, assessed? And it seemed uh, to the board and administration that the, uh, the way to go about this was to base it upon the impervious surface, since that's what the three acre rule is all about. It's not about the value of the property, it's about the amount of impervious surface on each, on each profit property. Need to come. So, come on up. Martin Green. Um, my understanding as far as zoning changes, and this could be apples and oranges, but they're always forward looking. Um, and to Desmond's point before about why are these, um, why is what the legislature has come up with, why is this retroactive? So I don't know if it's the same, fits in the same category, um, but I just wonder what would happen to the residents of Jersey Heights if they just said, no, we're, we're, we're not gonna do this. I mean, what recourse does the state have if they say, no, this is just, this is wrong, this is unjust. I, and I don't know the legality of that retroactive um, measure that they're doing. So that's, that's my question. So Martin, it's a good question. Um, I know other communities, I was reading something last week about a community um, a development in Richmond. I think they're asking a similar question. Obviously, I can't answer that question. I don't think any of us can answer that question. But there's, there's frustration around the state. But once again, you know, the board needed to, you know, Brent's alluded to this, we, we needed to be, we needed to take some action. Um, and we needed to put ourselves in a position where we were responding to a state mandate. We need to put ourselves in a position where we were getting the grant money. Because if we had enough, you know, if we had a said no, you know, if we had a decided we weren't gonna do anything, uh, we had we had no idea what the state was going to do, what ANR would do in response. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a similar kind of question. Um, in terms of the retroactive aspect of this, I, I remember when I first saw this, when Brent brought this to, to you know to our attention back in early June, it was like, wait, they can't do that, but they did, and um, so they they passed the statute in Montpelier and. We're now having this conversation tonight because of that. Okay. Brent, do you want to talk about the email you got from ENR regarding litigation? Yeah, so um, I've, I've had a lot of communication with ANR. ANR um, one said that they were willing to enforce and um, they were, legal team was already researching you know, methods for various communities, various three acre uh, designated uh, subdivisions, um, what they would be doing to move forward to, you know, legally move this forward. Um, and as fiduciaries to the town, um, the, the question of refusing more than 70% of the costs and then exposing the town to potential liabilities of not only the cost, the full cost, but subsequent penalties is quite substantial. There's also the matter of um, people who might want to sell their homes now have to disclose that legally and their, the documentation that they provide, provide to potential buyers. So that was really putting homeowners in Jersey Heights um, in a bind 
Um, I had people calling me that lived in New Jersey, their, their family, you know, their children moved up here to Morristown and they're considering buying in Jersey Heights, but this was disclosed to them. And they're wondering what, what the town was going to do. Um, so it really put a lot of people in, in a bind. And I can tell you wholeheartedly that this solution is not something where we're looking to point the townspeople against other townspeople. There's actually previous precedent. There's already a special tax assessment district in this community for expansion of utilities. Um, so that wasn't the intention of the board. That wasn't the intention of my recommendation to the board for the special tax assessment district. It really truly is not to put community, community, pit community members against other community members. It was an attempt at accepting the town's responsibility and because these are private properties with roofs and su private sidewalks, trying to work out a solution that was amenable to 64 residents. Um, you know, if, and the way this is worded for up to 20 years, for up to $200,000, um, it's not, the town cannot operate like a private business or an individual who can just go out and if they have good credit, get a loan. There's a whole process of warnings and, and things that need to be done. So we had to plan ahead for worst case scenarios and that's, that's what was done. Believe me, if there's ways to prevent having to take out 20 year, 15 year, 10 year, five year loan so that um, both, you know, everybody is, is saving money, then we will be looking at that. Liam, one sec. George? Right. Uh, I'm sorry. Martin, you're asking for us to conjecture. What if we've just said no? And I obviously, I don't know who knows what that, the actual answer to that is. But as, as uh, I think Don said, there's at least 700 of these sites across the state, maybe even more. I can only guess that if the word got out that people were saying no, towns, uh, shopping malls that have three acres of parking lot and those types of things, and were not being called to the carpet, the state, there's no way the state could allow that to happen without taking some action because then everybody would say, well, if town A did it or industrial park B did it, then I can do it and the thing would fall apart. So, and this is being for, forced at the state level by the, the federal EPA that said Vermont was not meeting their standards. I don't know what they would do. Nothing seems to me to not be the answer. What that would be, I'll stay away from that because that's pure conjecture. But I can't believe the state would just go, sure, we'll let entity A just tell us to buzz off and not worry about it. I don't see the state doing that. The what is the big question, not if, it's a what question to me. Leah. Yeah, um, I Ident just want to go back. Identify to yourself, please. Oh, thank you. Leah Bronner. I want to go back to the percentage of total impervious surface. And I just want to go back to what Lee was talking about. And because we are the Jersey Court Homeowners Association, we should all be, uh, have the same percentage of impervious surface. And you have two people, two, one, one building, two owners that have half as much as the rest of us. And so I just want to make sure that, well, you know, that it's all the same because we all have this, we all own all the same property. So it doesn't make sense that they only have Lee, can I ask you for clarification? Yeah. Just for my understanding, yeah. and both of you have raised the same question. Yeah. Is this one structure that has three, four condominiums in it? Is that the question that's so, coming up or? So one building with two units. Two units, okay. Right, and that's what all of our buildings are. One building with two units in it. And we all own the property together. Yeah, okay. Okay, like yeah. the impervious surface. We all own all the driveway. And the parking yeah, I can only speak for myself. Yep. But, but I think the answer, the answer to that needs to be found out because I would agree logically, unless there's a better explanation that if there's Two condominiums, unless there's a difference in square footage of the condominium nope. somehow, but if they're two identical yep. structures, 
within that one big building, then it seems to me that that's whatever the impervial surface of that building and any driveway or driveways that go with it is equally divided. But again, I think I'd ask Brent to comment on it or ask Tyler Mumley how he came to those percentages. I see I see that as a legitimate question. I, I don't see how that can happen. The only thing I could guess was they thought that they didn't belong to our HOA, like in our Jersey court. Like it was a separate building. That's my guess so from it, looking at it. So it was broken out uh, per parcel. So um, there's a section of Jersey court that and I can I can share this whomever, but this was um, broken out separate yeah, from was, this. Yeah, but why? Um, because of these different parcels. How is it a different parcel? We all own the same property. Uh, according to the records, this is a different parcel from this one. This is parcel fifty five A and fifty five B. Yep. And the condominium parcels are a 25020 dash and then as of the condos were built it was broken out into sub 54 55 so these all go together but that doesn't correct what you're telling yeah me? Oh, okay there's um, yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They're on a different I, parcel. I don't get it. I think what Leah, what you and uh, Leah are both raising is that this document needs some needs some scrutiny. Yes. I, I would say, you know, clearly it's part of the conversation. You know, it's it's part of the issue, but the conversation is really about Article Two, and um, I think and we should try and leave Article it. Article Two for real quick, and then I'm done. I just want to make sure that people in town know what they're voting on and i'm just looking around and i'm thinking when i got the email it was just to the people in jersey heights right that well there's a meeting tonight which is great i appreciate that but what about everybody else in town like are how are they getting their information i'm not expecting you to answer this i'm just saying i'm a little worried about people seeing Article one and Article two, and being like, I don't know what I'm voting for. That's it. Uh, that is very well uh, taken as well. That uh, we're concerned about that because these articles. That's why we're having this special meeting this tonight, and why we had one last week, and why we'll have another one next week. And um, I'm seeing a lot of faces that I know live in Jersey Heights, and I'm not seeing very many that don't live in Jersey Heights. And it's, uh, I, I, I very much share your concern. Desmond, I'm gonna just, I just wanna make sure everyone's had a chance to yeah. speak once and... Thank you, Desmond. And then I'm gonna give people online a chance to speak as well after the audience here has a chance. I, just to follow up on that, I'm sorry, Haley would side gyron. Thank you, Haley. Thank you. Um, just to follow up on that comment, it seems particularly um, loaded <laughs> the way that this is worded. And I know it's a ship that's already sailed in terms of legal stuff and all of that, but it, it speaks as if it only it benefits us. And so why would anybody want to assume any responsibility for that without the larger conversation? So that's that it does feel pitted against one against the other. So if there's any opportunity to change that or to uh, correct that, I would, I would certainly vote for that. I'm sure we all would. Um, the other thing that I am in question of is the attention to um, assessing or scrutinizing the, the actual percentages and so forth. And I wonder what the plan is to do that. So your first question, um, I'll say once again that these articles went through many iterations from the legal advice that we received. And uh, so I'll leave it at that. There is unfortunately no way to change this. This is the way it's been warned. We can't change it. Certainly we could, but it would be far from legal. So, and in regards to the second question, I, am I correct that this was a first attempt at trying to figure out what the- It's not a first attempt, the um, civil engineer Based those percentages off of parcels. 
parcels assigned to the Jersey Heights subdivision. So I, I can have them go back and, and look at, you know, measurements of impervious surface, but it's not an attempt. It's, it's as a civil engineer stamp on it. And, uh, um, you know, I talked to legal counsel about different methodologies. Another method could have been that uh, we just took the assessment of everybody's property and it's, you know, made that percentage calculation purely based upon property value. Um, but I personally wouldn't, I would think that that would be less fair um, that because somebody has a beautifully manicured home with shrubs and, you know, a pool, um, that the, the evaluation, the percentage was based on that rather than actually measuring impervious surface per parcel. So that's... So my question was but in these response are... to what was said earlier, and that was that they will be adjusted, that they will, you know, that that seems to be something that it's not locked in. And if it sounds like you're no. saying it is locked in. No, it's not locked in, but I, I wanted to clarify, yeah. this isn't a first attempt. Okay. There was a civil engineer that put quite a bit of effort yeah. into this. Um, so I'm happy to have him, you know, double check and, and reconfirm. Uh, and if there are errors, of course, we want to fix that. But I just want to clarify that this, this was more than an attempt. Yes. I guess what we need to know, when I look at these, these are clearly rounded numbers. Mm -hmm. So um, he, he, there, there's some sort of a, something he used to guide him as to what, what it took to stick at 0.5% and what it took to become 1%. Well, is, is there a range? That's kind yeah. of what I wonder. Is there a range? So if yeah. you have a home that is 20, we'll say 20 by 30 and your driveway is a similar number, does that fit in with someone that has a driveway, their home that's 20 by 35? Is that, you know, the square footage, is, does it, yeah. you know what I mean, Brent? Like, does that, because I see what you're saying, does that fit? I, I'm, not, I'm not raising any question about that. It, no, was, I'm, it was what was said earlier about yeah. we need to look into that things that yeah you know. Well, but that, so. that's I'm trying to answer. Your, I think I'm trying to answer your question because I understand what you're saying. Yeah. It, does it fit? If it fits in this x amount of square footage, does it equal half a percent? This amount of square mm -hmm. footage between here and here is it one percent? Right. We I, we we need an answer as to why they came out to be such nicely rounded numbers. Right. But Thank I you. think we can guess Thank how that happened. Other comments? My name is Pat Harrington. I live at 254 Cotton Street. First name again? Pat Harrington. Um, I guess I'm the 64th person on the list. And uh, regardless of that, even if I wasn't on the list, I'm socking it to these folks, to us. Uh, this is my question. Uh, does this go out to bid? The, the work, the job. Uh, who's going to do the job, and where did this quote come from? And I understand there's a person that owns part of the prop owns the property that's needed to, to do this. Is he going to give that property if he's not awarded the bid? So uh, there, there is an RFP that will go out, scheduled to go out. What's an RFP? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Request for proposal. Okay. I, I hate acronyms. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I just don't know what it meant. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, so that's one thing. Um, I guess that's my only, uh, my neighbors did a good job and, and I am fairly agree with it. So many changes have made this, we were told this and that really wasn't the case. So that leads me to believe one of two things. We're not prepared for this because what are the next changes gonna be? Uh, I mean, as far as you, you have to form a thing. No, you don't have to form it. They can't make you form one. Then, uh, oh, we can't get the money. Oh, yeah, we can get the money. What's the real answers? In November, we're going to put this to a vote. How do we know we have the answers? And then I'm really concerned with everybody else says about the fairness or the, the way it's brought to the people that don't live in Jersey Way. Who are going to really decide? Okay, we have 64 votes. Uh, really, okay? It's like Vermont in the, uh, uh, the presidential election. We were, you know. It's going to be a Democrat, okay? And this is how it is. But the bottom line is, we really don't have a say in the way it's proposed. The way I see it proposed in in the wording of this, anybody's going to look at this 
and say, I'm not voting for it because it doesn't affect me. But there's nowhere in there that says it could affect you. And I, am, I think it's incumbent on you to say, we're deciding that we should do this. But be aware of the fact that down the road, you know, we've set a precedence here and it could affect you. Okay, so that, that's my, my opinion as far as uh, this whole thing. It's just uh, right from the very beginning, you know, back to who, who's responsible in this deed and this deed. My neighbor did a lot of research. I think she opened your eyes some. I should, shouldn't be surprises to you guys at this point when, uh, when the, uh, your constituents are going to vote and come up with a solution that's going to affect us that really could affect them, but they're not aware of it. They're not a, by based on, on that uh, documentation, that paperwork, it, it's not fair to them either because they're not getting, I don't want to say not true, but they're not getting what really could, uh, could happen to them based on their vote here by their ignorance of not really what, knowing what's, what the real big picture is. So I think it's incumbent on you to say, this is what the deal is. But be aware of the fact that we're setting a precedence here and it could affect you in the future because the town is deciding to pit one group against the whole town. Next time you could be pitted against the town, so. Thank you, Pat. Uh, other comments, questions in the room? Anybody online? Okay, I'll let people come up for a second time. Come on up, Desmond. Right. Desmond Coclasier. I My question was actually very similar to hers is, so is this going out to town, the rest of the, uh, the, the residents of the town? How, how, are the, how are residents of the town getting this pamphlet? The article is going out as written. That will be on the ballot. So this here is going to? That will not be on the ballot. He's asking about the, the information. Right. The information, yes, here. So saying Article 2, passed, this is what it is, failed, no, and that there. Is that what's going out to the rest of the residents? Because I understand that you, is that a yes, yes or no? Well, it's not a simple question. yes or no. Huh? Well, you're holding in your hand. Not this exact packet, but this here. How, how this is printed, how this is described. The flow chart. The flow chart, yes. That is on the website. The ballot will have the article on there, okay. Desmond, but the flow chart will not be on the ballot. Okay. Because, yes, it, it is very, I understand you said legally, like it had to do it, but Everybody knows when you talk to your lawyer, he will tell you, hey, this is how you can get what's in your interest without any judgment against the, the other side coming against you. There's actually just the opposite. Um, we wanted to try to include as much information as possible. And legal counsel uh, was very clear that uh, if there's any perception of the warning being specific to very specific information uh, and there's any attempt to try to educate in the motion, the legal motion that, that's being sent out in ballots, then that, that is potential for, for being challenged. So what about the flow chart? Is the flow chart given besides coming to the meetings? Is the flow chart given to anybody at all? Uh, it's given to anybody who requests it. It's given to anybody who goes on our website and looks for it. But we so are not, we are, on the let me answer your question. So we're not mailing it to everybody. No. We're not handing it to everybody, but we are making it available to everybody. All right, so the flow chart is then, so people do have access to seeing Seeing how this goes. In fact, if I'm correct, uh, Judy, this is is this exactly what's on the website? This exact slide, so that that is available to anybody who would request it or want to look for it. And it says we would have to um, pay f the town if it failed. Would have to pay for expenses immediately. So well, we're just talking Article Two right now, Desmond. All right. Okay. So just sorry, but I just okay. want to stay with that. All right, so he's a grandma in, in town responsible for 100%. So, 
again, that, that is also misleading because then it can, they can seem think is 100% of the entire, not, not the 200,000, but the entire. Um, if the article fails, the town of Morristown would be yeah. responsible for 100%. Uh, less the grant, though, I think. Is well, grant. less the grant, but 100% yeah, yeah, of but the 113,000. It doesn't read that way. It just it just reads that one hundred percent without any without any grant. So that's, well, that's again very misleading. So it says <clears throat> use grant funds in the town of Morristown responsible for one hundred percent. So use yeah. grant funds and then any remaining amount no. the town would be responsible for. Yeah, you're on. Are you, are you on? Is it? Most people aren't going to read that. But. And then we're not done on to Article 3 just yet. You we said, are so not. I can't no. ask a question about that right now. Okay. All right, cool. So with that said, that's a good segue. Any other comments about Article 2? Okay, I'm going to move on to Article 3. No, sorry. Uh, Tom Flutie again. Uh, Brent, I did not, I uh, hope I didn't infer that the, the select board intentionally did this to pit one group against the other group. Uh, I believe that the select board did this because they thought initially when we started the discussion that grant of three hundred something thousand dollars was contingent on on uh, getting money from Jersey Heights one way or the other and then as uh, Chris said they pivoted and unfortunately the select board did not and that's where they had the opportunity to change that so I understand why they had the, originally why uh, uh, Jersey Heights was included, but once we realized that you were going to get that three hundred twenty thousand dollars anyway, uh, I believe that the town should should have just picked up the the hundred roughly one hundred twenty thousand dollars, which is going to be, and I uh, from Poets Forum is going to be, I'm sure hearing from uh, from the people, and I am not a part of Jersey Heights, and I know a lot of people that aren't who don't agree with this also. Thank you, Tom. Anything else on Article 2? Yeah. I just have to say, Dale Touchet, um, you know, the way Article 2 is written, it says, for the purpose of constructing stormwater improvements to benefit 64 parcels, which is, I feel, misleading because it's really not a benefit of, air, of the 64 parcels. The state has said that it's to benefit the Champlain Basin. And we have a wonderful stormwater um, system that's worked well. I, I have not seen anybody come by my house, which is where most of the stormwater goes, I guess, somewhere by my house, which is where this construction of whatever you're going to put up is going to go is behind my house on Howard's property. It's worked fine. There's no flooding, hasn't been any flooding. I don't really know where all this water goes, but I cannot see how any stormwater that's coming from 55 miles away is getting to the Champlain Basin that's causing this much problems with phosphorus or whatever that is putting into, or pollutants or whatever that's being put into the Champlain Basin from up here in Morrisville. And I really feel that this is very misleading that's going out to the whole town that's saying it's benefiting us. It's not, it's just not. Wow. So that's sad. That's sad that we have this fight, it's dividing the town, because of the state and whatever regulations that they have that's, you know, gone back 17 years where this, this permit has worked fine. And now it's creating a real problem for our town. And it's just silly, silliness. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna move on to article three. Article three is about how this will be financed. Again, article two is about the creation of the special tax assessment district. Article three is about the financing of the stormwater improvements. And the article that uh, voters will be voting upon reads, shall the voters of the town of Morristown authorize borrowing an amount not to exceed $200,000 
to be financed over a period not to exceed 20 years to pay for state required stormwater infrastructure improvements in the Jersey Heights Special Assessment District. Now, obviously, this article can go two ways as well. And um, as I said last week, and as I said earlier about Article 2, I think the flowchart nicely spells out in layman's terms what this might mean. If Article 3 does pass, if the voters do approve it by voting yes, um, we can use grant funds and obtain the long-term financing to amortize the costs for the town and the 64 parcel owners. So in other words, it allows us to borrow the money in very, very simple terms. If it fails, the use of grant funds and pay any additional expenses uh, will need to happen immediately. So we will not be able to borrow the money. We would have to pay for this immediately. So with that said, I would open it up for discussion. Any comments on Article 3? Yeah, go ahead. Just please, please continue to identify yourself. Um, what is the special um, assessment passes, but the article for the money doesn't pass? Right. What happens? in that situation. So we're going to talk about those scenarios in the next agenda item, so I'm going to wait on that. But it's th these are excellent, excellent questions. You know, the what ifs. And um, obviously, I think that's why we got as much legal advice as we, we did get. By the way, I, I need you, we all know each other, but I need you to identify yourselves because there's going to be a lot of people listening to this meeting next this this weekend next week and they're not going to know who's talking but that's no you're you're fine <laughs> any other comments not everybody knows you so that's <laughs> um so it says we have to we won't you won't be able we won't be able to borrow any money essentially if if it fails and we have to pay for it immediately when it, when is the this proposal supposed to be started anyway so how would we have to pay for it immediately if we don't have exact figures of how much it's going to cost and we don't have everything on deck in order to start start the construction it's 2024 right now obviously this project is scheduled to be completed by uh august 2026 um August 31st, 2026. Yeah. yeah. So the town's already incurred costs related to this, and um, it's broken out into different, there's a, there's a milestone timeline, and that milestone mm -hmm. timeline is broken out into you know, what can and can't be covered. So town's incurring costs, you know, civil, engineering work, uh, civil engineer working on this. So there's certain points and milestones that can be reached. Um, and then we can use the grant funds. Um, since this is a project that requires a uh, review of, since the current stormwater solution is pending with the state, um, and the civil engineer believes that there's a more efficient and cost-effective solution, uh, they're already working, and that work, uh, requires billables that mm -hmm. the town is already paying for. Mm -hmm. um, and so as it moves forward, there's going to be costs incurred uh, until completion. Okay, and it says, uh, and again, we have to pay for it immediately. How, how, much is, how much is that? And how is the town gonna come up with that, with that money? There's no way to forecast exactly when. We're, okay. Again, we're already uh, receiving yeah, yeah, we're raising uh, bills and, and, and paying for them. Um, but there is a timeline that sort of outlines the general constructs of when things need to be submitted. And um, I'm happy to have that posted on the website. We have the capacity to do that. Um, and that, that would better answer those, right. those questions. But again, we're relying upon a state 
Agency of Natural Resources to evaluate whatever we submit yep. and assess it. And until they agree, we can't even come up with a number for um, what that solution might cost, just the physical mm -hmm. construction of it. What I've been told repeatedly, and I've asked it repeatedly because I don't want to be wrong about this, is that the current solution that was submitted is worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. So um, again, so how will, how will the town pay for it immediately if it doesn't pass? The, the town would have to, the administration and select board would have to look at the budget and uh, <laughs> what is available for monies and pay Does for it that way. Does the town currently have the monies to, to cover, well, to cover um, worst case scenario? That I don't know right now. I don't have that in front of me, so. Okay, Does, and do any of you know if the town currently, yeah, I should know this, because you are our town leaders, do any of you know if the town currently has the monies to cover that? Well, there's... Worst case scenario. There's the ability to flex the budget, to pull resources from departments, there's ability to deficit spend, which I certainly wouldn't be a proponent for. No, uh, there's, there's several different options as, as a town to be able to try to assess the best solution for... Does the town have the ability to do so? You're asking us if we're going to have the ability to do so. You know, the, this work is not going to be done in 2024. No, I, I understand, but, but it, it clearly it states right there, if it doesn't, the town has to pay immediately. Immediately means... I guess the answer, right Desmond, now. is going to be that we're going to have to find the money. So We're so, paying for it, for, so, for it now. So yes, the town does have the ability then to pay for yeah. it if... Worst case scenario, if it does, if it doesn't pass. Yeah. Worst case scenario. Sure. Uh, I'm saying, I'm talking right. about the dollar amount. Worst, right. He's saying the dollar. Worst case scenario. Okay. So, uh, the select board, any select board in the state of Vermont, has the ability to borrow money up to not to exceed five years. Mm -hmm. So, worst case scenario, um, if there's not any money in the budget, and honestly. Uh, we're entering into discussions about what the next 25, 26 budget is going to look like. Um, worst case scenario, we would end up borrowing money um, on five years versus, you know, 15 or 20 years, which would accelerate the payback in that window. Mm -hmm. Because yes. there's not this little nest of extra cash that's then yeah. allocated that we could specifically go to do that. You know, okay. It's going to affect everybody's tax rate. So you'd be, sure. you'd be able to take, do you, sorry. Do you have a comment? I do. Yeah, go ahead. I, let me try it a different way, Desmond, the, to try and answer your question. We've got a grant for 316000 and change. It's a reimbursement grant. It comes in stages. They're not going to cut us a check for 316000 Oh, no, I'm not. The, no, let, let, let me go for a second. No. So as we're incurring costs for civil engineering, legal services, as for the preparatory kind of services, when we re reach a stage, we will submit those documents and the, the state, assuming that they accept the documentation, will provide us with X amount of dollars. There's, there's a, a number. And mm -hmm. the, so it's a cash flow issue to begin with, because the $316,000 is the first money we're going to spend. So that's going to get us through a fair amount of this. We will go out for an RFP that will tell us what the construction cost is going to be. We will also have the answers November 5th as to can we do we have the permission to borrow money? Is a special tax assessment district being created or not? That then, as Chris had said, leads us to what do we budget in the town for 25-26? That's part of the reason why this is going in November, so that we have the answers, whatever the town votes on Article 2 and on Article 3, to properly build the budget for 25, 26, to fill in the difference, either the principal and interest that is all of 100% or the, yeah. or the 34%, depending on how that vote goes. So if, if, if the town says, yes, do the special tax down, I'm doing Article 3. But, and two and then we're together, doing three kind of blending them all together um we're going to have directions to what to do as the select board as far as the budget's concerned 
And, and, and therefore, we will have the money. Okay. One way or another, we will either budget for it immediately in the 25, 26, or talk about a five-year short-term loan, as Chris has alluded to, mm -hmm. or we will have the authority to borrow, and then we will go out to an RFP on the borrowing, and we will have exactly what the principal and interest costs are over a period of time, it, whether it's the max amount or less, depending on how the, the RFPs come in for the construction. That will determine how much mm -hmm. of the cost we need to, to borrow for. Um, and that, then we will actually have solid numbers because we will then enter a contract with whatever contractor yep. meets our specifications. Uh, so we will have money available. The, the question here, the answer to your question is yes, 316,000 has been pledged to us as long as we meet the requirements of the, the grant. That takes care of 70% of the process. The other 30% we will have the answer to on November the 6th, basically, the day after when we all both accounted. And then we will be able to proceed as a town into the next step, which is budgeting the amount of money that, that we need to have available, whether it's over long term or over short term. Does that help? Um, it does. Yeah. Okay. The reason why I ask, because when you put the, the term immediately in, that is going to trigger some money like, oh, so then they, if it needs to get done right now, the town isn't going to, going to be able to. The way each and every one of you kind of answered my question tells me that you won't need the funds immediately, that this is a fluent process. Monies will be coming in to help cover to be going through. But by putting immediately in, and that's very close to red, the coloring you have on, on those pamphlets there, red means stop, all no. What am I doing here? By putting that term in there, you're going to send... The, the voters in, in a little bit of a tizzy to kind of help get them onto your side. So that's whether that's the intent or not, does, intent doesn't matter, right? Intent doesn't matter whether you intend to do it or not. That is what you're doing. So, so when we use the word immediately, I, I want to explain this. We're paying right now. So yeah. there are certain things that need to be met for us to take even the first payment of up to $79,000 mm -hmm. up to. So the, what's meant by immediately is rather than amortizing the costs out over a certain period of time, as they become due and payable, they're payable immediately. And so that's what is meant. And currently, although we didn't budget for civil engineering costs related to this, and we didn't budget for legal costs related to this, we've been paying them since before June when I became aware of this. Um, so that's that's what's meant by immediately. We're, we're paying them and then, so if we don't have financing to be able to amortize over a certain period of time, they're just due immediately. That, that's why that word is being used. Thank you, Desmond. Other comments? Just a question to follow up with that on Haley Woodside Gyron. I am curious about the um, stipulations in the grant procedures that do the legal fees aren't covered by grant funds, I'm assuming. Yes, some of them are, yeah. They are. Yeah. And that's the, the presentation I provided back in, I don't know, June, July. That was the only thing built into this original budget <laughs> that I had concerns with because everything else, you know, the civil engineer um, and other people thought that there was, you know, it was built so that uh, even three years later, civil engineer did not think that this project would cost that much. The real concern that I have uh, as town manager is if we need to expend legal costs uh, on this because, you know, we can't get an easement or, you know, there's something else that, that is blocking us from getting this done, that, that could substantially increase the costs related to this. So ultimately those costs, assuming that the first amendment or first piece passes and is split up between us, that ultimately gets passed on to us in effect as well. 
if it passes, 66% would be uh, to the 64 residents and 34% would be to the town. Right, that stings a little bit. <laughs> yes, we're all involved, yeah. Uh, Every, everything about this stings Because we're, that, that ultimately means, <laughs> that ultimately means that we're paying for the problem that we're, we're that's being put upon us, at, you know, as individual homeowners in Morsel, taxpayers that are currently paying. So I, I find that hard to swallow. <laughs> Thank you. Other comments? Comments online? Okay, I'll move on to our last agenda item, an overview. Our, yeah, an overview of the special town meeting, November 5th, 2024, articles two and three. And again, there's a, um, it's not really a flow chart, there's a matrix here to look at, and it summarizes the different options. If article two should pass, Jersey Heights, as we well know tonight, special assessment district formed among 64 parcels, Jersey Heights would be responsible for 66% and the town of Morrisville would be responsible for 34. If Article 3 passes, we would use grant funds and obtain long-term financing to amortize the cost for the town and the 64 parcel owners. If Article 2 fails, the town of Morristown is responsible for 100% of the cost. And if Article 3 fails, we would uh, use grant funds and the town pays any additional expenses immediately. And you can cross-references, reference those boxes for the different iterations that we've, that have been expressed. So, questions? Um, the L2 shed, I just wanna get something clarified. I think at the last meeting, uh, you had said that if there were some expenses that weren't covered by the grant, that you would be submitting them to the state to see if they would pay for some of these costs. You were saying that some of, some of the attorney fees perhaps weren't covered or there were some things in the, that the grant itself would not cover, but you could submit different costs to the state to see if they would still pay for them. Am I correct or wrong? Um, I, I don't recall saying that. I, I did say that I negotiated with the state. And an example is, um, um, pre-application costs mm -hmm. were added uh, because of those negotiations. Um, so what's been negotiated and what, what's been allowed is, is, is built in. Um, I did also say that it, it was refreshing to see that the state was willing to negotiate on, on several matters. Okay. Um, but now that this contract is in place, I, I also said that if we miss a timeline for some reason, they will work with us as much as possible mm -hmm. around the timeline. But I do, I cannot, I cannot say that you know if we exceed legal costs, um, that they will that they will allow it. It's that is more uh, specific, um, and I'll I'll make sure that this is po posted tomorrow morning so that people can see what's allowable, the milestones that need to be met, and, and the timeline uh, fully. Okay, that would be helpful. Thanks. Thank you. Other comments? Uh, I appreciate all the work. I'm sorry we've had- Tom Cloutier. Tom Just, Cloutier. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, uh, that- I know everybody go, knows your voice. Go through all this. I really am, uh, it seems like it wasn't necessary if we went different ways, but it is what it is, and we're going to try to get the information out. And I believe if we get the information out as on our side, I think that that you uh, uh, you'll be paying for the hundred eighty five thousand dollars, which we'll be discussing at budget time. But uh, but uh, one question I have uh, on this handout you gave. Uh, explaining why Jersey Heights and all this. Uh, Chris, only your name is on there. Is this your opinion or is this the selector's opinion? Um, when I um, 
came in Monday um, because I've been out of the country for a couple of weeks. I talked with the chair, I talked with the manager about um, getting an explanation piece out um, regarding um, what the municipal's facts were for this. So this for, is, so yes, just you, wait, I'm let, turning let answer. Okay. So um, I, I asked um, two parties here if they thought it would be a good idea to put a piece out. And they agreed that it would be. Um, in discussions with Brent, um, he said that he had a full plate and uh, wouldn't be able to meet the deadlines for the News and Citizen this week. Don was otherwise engaged. Um, I drew the short straw um, on it. Um, I vetted this with the town manager to make sure that he approved anything that was in this that was coming out, uh, and as well as the chair. And it does have my name on it. Um, and it's been vetted by the administration and that's why it is. Okay, was it vetted by the other select board members? No, I didn't. We are in, we're in a manager form of government now, and the buck stops with the manager. Right. It's yes. kind of iffy on that one. Okay, all right, thank you. So this is out in the news and citizen? It will be on Thursday. The question was, the question was, is this going to be out on the news and citizen? The answer is yes. Please just try, I'm going to ask everyone, please, please try and use the microphone so everyone that who's not present can hear us. I'm sorry, Haley, yeah, I know, I'm not sorry, Haley Woodside Gyron again, and I find that extremely troubling timeline wise that, you know, the, in fact, to get people involved in this conversation much earlier on a broader scope than just the people who live in Jersey Heights would, would have been much more um, effective for, for a general conversation, you know, like, words themselves aren't just words. There's yeah. there's text, there's discourse practice, and there's social practices. And the way that this has been rolled out doesn't, doesn't allow for that social practice of community. It's pit one against the other. Yeah. It's very uncomfortable. There's a lot of uncertainty. It's, it's pushed back all the way from the top and just gets moved on further down the road. So I, I want to just, I, I, and I don't, I appreciate the work that you do, and I know that it's a heavy lift, so I, I, I have gratitude for that, but I really can't go without saying how problematic I find that to be. Yeah, and um, it's been said by at least one person here tonight that they did not think that we were trying to pit one part of the community against another, and I, that's clearly not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to do, and that's so I just, but I just, and, the second part of your comment, um, you know, we've had a lot of conversation here in public on how to uh, educate the community uh, about these two articles. I think we all agree that there is a lot of potential confusion here. And the feeling was, um, just like I'm sure there's feelings for everyone in the audience tonight, that's really important to get the information out. And so that was part of this. Um, there may be other other attempts to get information out as well from from members of this board from administration as i'm sure there will be attempts by members of the of the public and that's that's great that's good and we can't ask for too much more than that we've already talked about the fact that members of jersey heights are you know the the owners of those 64 parcels are very are <laughs> quite well versed on this issue the rest of the town is not Done. Yeah. If I may, and our ability to provide information to the residents um, is really contingent upon the process of warnings and the select board voting for these articles. So we could not provide information about potential articles. We, we are only allowed to provide information about articles once they're passed. And as soon as they were passed, all of this information was put on the website and meetings had already been planned so that we could inform the public as much as possible. And we made a special attempt to invite everybody from Jersey Heights because we know that these are not only viewed live, but the recorded so that Jersey Heights residents could voice their opinions 
and their feedback about this, and it could be viewed by the, the wider public so that your, you know, your opinions were shared with all the residents of the community. Um, so we, we have tried uh, to make sure that we were within the rules of Vermont state statutes around articles and then providing information subsequently. Uh, but that did limit us with our ability to provide information, but we prepared and as soon as this, these articles were passed by the select board, we had information on our website and available to, to the, the community. Um, if, if there's any delay with providing this information, it's around abiding by state statutes um, because you can't really provide information until an article has been passed. Uh, as per state statute. And I would just add, we, we passed these articles nine days ago. It was September 30th, and we had an informational meeting, a public meeting on this last week. So this is our second meeting. So thank you, Brent. Desmond Coclasier, you say you just passed the nine days ago? We just warned the articles. Okay, when did you find out that, the, uh, that we can get the grant money without doing the tax? Assessment of the tax on district? Yeah. I think uh, I clarified that probably, I, I'd be guessing uh, mid to late July. Mid to late July. So that was. That was when we signed the permit, is so that correct? That was way yeah. after. No, that's when I sought clarification from the state to make sure that what we were moving forward with would be acceptable yeah. to the state. Okay, so actually I was coming up to say something completely different, but that little nugget. So you found out in July that we didn't need a special tax district in order to get, get the grant money. That when we met, we were told that in order to get the grant money, you need a special tax district. That was, we're going to make the, the town vote, vote on it. I was under the impression that it was much later after and it was too late to not put it on the ballot essentially, um, because I'm, I'm just saying that's just, that was just my thinking. So now, yeah, of course, I'm even more upset knowing that, it, knowing that it doesn't need to be on the ballot, but you're putting, on, putting it on it anyway. You know, talking about getting information out to the, to the public, information like this is just going to confuse the public even more. This isn't, this isn't telling the entire story of everything, all of the meetings that we've had from Jersey Heights and everybody with you with you guys it's not telling the entire story it's not telling the story that the state was trying to force us to be an hoa you didn't want to be an hoa and that the only way that the town can make this work is with grant money that the only way you can get the grant money is to do a special tax district and that and that's not true anymore and the fact that you guys knew that in july and you're still moving forward with this you're pretty much lying to the town townspeople I'm sorry, it, 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 that, it is what it is. You're not being honest, you're not being forthright. And if you're not being forthright, you're pretty much lying. I hate to call lying is a lies, strong right? word. Yeah. And it's not applicable here. What, not, what being, was for, done, not being forthright. The, the decision was made based upon what the select board decided was fair to the town as a whole, based upon this being a sub development it, to the the if you had been in previous meetings you would have been in a meeting where it that this very same discussion was brought up i don't have it in front of me i'm estimating it was july the decision that the, the information was shared in that meeting yeah. and it's been shared subsequently and the decision for the special tax assessment district was based upon something totally separate from that after learning that information. It was based upon what's been said tonight, and what's been said in meetings previously. It was based upon setting a precedent of being concerned about other subdivisions who might be faced with this, and then they just remove themselves as an HOA. Just so many different potential- I'm sorry, I have to, I have to stop you. I was at the meeting when, the, when we were talking about the special tax district and the, the decision to do it would be because we can only get the grant money if we had that private 
public what was the date of that? Par partnership. I'm sorry, I don't remember the exact date. You're asking me dates. No, I you didn't. You've asked me for dates. No. What was the date of that? I don't remember the exact date, and I didn't ask you for exact okay, date. Um, okay, folks, you, Desmond, I, Desmond, I'm going to ask you to stop right now. This is a. This is. I just want to say something. I. This is a frustrating topic and conversation for all of us and i know you're frustrated uh -huh. i please let me i've given you a lot of microphone time um and i just want to keep it's emotional it's emotional for all of us i don't want to get into a conversation where we start saying things that we can't back up uh, you know, calling any of us liars is not the discord that we need tonight. What we what we need, we've had a great conversation tonight. Um, I'll say it again. It's frustrating. It's frustrating for George. It's frustrating for Laura. It's frustrating for Chris and Richard and Brent and the entire administration, Judy and myself. And it's frustrating for you. But but please. <laughs> Nobody's lying. Nobody's being deceitful. Nobody's doing anything like that. What we're trying to do this is, is we're, we're having these, it is not. It, 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 I, I would say that that sheet of paper is far from it. It's just the opposite. But I would ask you, if you have a specific question to ask, please ask that question or specific comment, but don't make this personal. That's not why no, we're here. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not making it personal, but I'm, the, the issue is we were told one thing and now I'm being, I'm being told that that is not what we were told. When that is exactly what we were told, we were told that the reason for this special tax <clears throat> district was so that we can get the grant money. That's 100% correct. Am I lying? Am I, am I misremembering? As, had, as you've said, Desmond, no, 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 as no, you've I'm, said, Desmond, well, you asked a question. So as you said, things pivoted. We, we weren't in charge of this, you know, this pivot. The state, the state I, did, they did that very, first I, in, that very first meeting we had and where we're at now are two different places. It's a very dynamic exactly. situation. Yeah. Um, but did, did we, were we hold, we, we thought we needed an HOA in the very beginning. We thought that's where it was, and we're 100%. not there anymore. We're, we've moved beyond that because we realized, everyone realized that that wasn't possible to create an HOA. However, I, I will say, you know, it was part of the conversation. This board did decide to ask the voters to put a special tax assessment district in place. It will be up to the voters to decide that. We made a decision. We're going to stand behind that decision. We need to. We have to. We don't have any choice. Um, we do have. That, but you, but to, we don't have any choice right now because we have because warned Because you're ready article. to put the ballots up and we did all that. Stuff. That's why you don't have a choice. But yeah. you did have a choice before. When you found out that we didn't need a special tax district to actually get the grant money, you had a choice at that point. And you, we, you did. And, 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 you, and you chose to... Put it on us anyway. And, and that I, is what and you, I, that is what you chose. You chose to turn your back on sixty four town residents. Yeah. And yeah, that that's, and that's what you chose to do. I've explained tonight already Sorry. why. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Can I get some airspace? <laughs> I just want to pull up some stuff. Alec, can you pull up the website, please? And go to the main page before we got this so we can show them where it is. Thank you. Um, so on the town website, just so that you folks can pass this information out to others, there's the Jersey Heights three acre rule right on the front page. And when you click on that and go down, it will go all the way back to the very first presentation by ANR. And then it has the Jersey Heights presentation that Brent did, and then the special meetings. So this information is all out there for folks to see. I think it's important that people know that. Thank, Thank you, Judy. Tom Cody again. You have a wonderful website. People in town don't go to that. You've been saying everything's on your website. Everything else. People don't go onto your website. You put What's up? What's everything up? there, and it, you know, not enough people go, or they'd be here. 
there's got to be some on the way. I, I'm afraid I, I can't give you an answer for that. But saying it's on the website, therefore you should be able to get it, is not a solution. There's got to be some other ways. I don't know what they are. But another point I want to make is getting this out, this two sheets of paper, and is not informative. This is propaganda to pa pass your your bill. That's what this is. It doesn't say anything in here like it's eighty-five thousand dollars will go to the to the Jerseyites. There's nothing here saying how much it is. It's just that you come up with a three hundred sixteen thousand, but not the eighty-six. I think you'll look pretty silly for going through all this talk for eighty-six thousand dollars. So you might want to edit this little piece of propaganda, Chris, before you put it in the, the news citizen. I'm going to bring the conversation back to, we're unfortunately yeah. on a tangent here. I'm and the, the agenda item is the interaction between Article 2 and 3 okay. and whether one passes and one fails. So if you I could, want to get please. Somehow, I, this is just, it seems like it just. Tom, we're talking time. about the same thing that yeah. we've talked about earlier. Other comments? Um, I would like to say a, a, little bit. a lot of people are he said just, Don. <laughs> a lot of people are just lazy. They don't read the notices in the post office. They don't read the notices out here. They don't read them in the news and citizen and yet they want to complain about everything. I've been to all these stormwater meetings. You guys have done a hell of a job. Uh, you've explained everything to us time and time again. I mean, we just went through this the other night. I, I have no complaints with the way you guys have handled yourselves. And I complain about having to pay but I can't blame it on you guys. The, the state mandated this and we've got, in the beginning people wanted a fire district, which wasn't possible. Uh, we had, you guys came up with this special assessment. I think it's the best of all worlds. Not really. Well, I, I know, I know. One, one but, not the best come on, it, it's uh, getting mad and ugly about, it, it's crazy. Thank you, Lee. Other comments? Martin Green. Yeah, I just want to say I go to the website. I think it's beautiful. Thank you for those who take care of it. Thank very you. Thank you, Judy Alberry. Judy Alberry, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, here's one who goes to the site. And uh, I think it's incumbent upon all the citizens to be civically engaged and get the information and be involved and uh, not expect it to be spoon fed. It's all our responsibility as citizens. Thank you, Martin. Other comments? Board members? Then I will move on. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I have a motion by George. Do I have a second? Second. So I have a motion by George, a second by Richard. Discussion? All those in favor of adjournment, say aye. Aye. That would be unanimous. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.